No film in the history of the cinema was as notorious as Greed. Eric von Stroheim, its director, had a reputation for extravagance and a passion for authenticity. For his third feature, Foolish Wives, he rebuilt Monte Carlo at Universal City, the costliest film yet made. Stroheim clashed with a young producer called Irving Tholberg, who fired him from Universal. The Goldwyn Company gave him the chance to fulfill an ambition to film Frank Norris's epic novel, McTeague. Rather than simplify it, he elaborated it. Early in 1923, Stroheim went to San Francisco where the novel was set. His use of location was revolutionary. He not only shot real exteriors in real streets, taking over an entire block which exists to this day, he filmed inside the houses too and made the actors live in the rooms. Walls were torn down to make room for cameras and lights. I can't cheat, Stroheim said. My mind doesn't work that way. The final sequence was shot in Death Valley, 125 degrees. The cameras had to be protected with covers soaked in water. And that water would evaporate in about five minutes, but it kept the magazines cool. And Stroheim, he had a very funny get up. He was dressed in uh, shorts. He had uh, yellow gloves, and he really thought he was on the Sahara Desert. One of our cooks died, and two or three people got very sick. I didn't wait to get sick. I said, you better send me home. After 198 days, Stroheim finished shooting in October 1923. He'd shot over 96 hours. After months of editing, he produced a nine-hour film. By the time he'd reduced it to five hours, the Goldwyn Company had merged with Metro and Mayer. His new boss was his old boss. Irving Thalberg, together with Louis B. Mayer. Thalberg insisted on greed being a commercial length. In despair, Stroheim sent the cutting copy to his friend, the director Rex Ingram, whose editor, Grant Whitock, reduced it to three and a quarter hours. If you cut one more foot, said Ingram, I'll never speak to you again. But on Thalberg's orders, greed was cut to a final length of ten reels, two and a quarter hours. Characters were lost, and whole reels were summed up by titles. Stroheim refused to look at the result. The man who cut my film, he said, had nothing on his mind but a hat. The picture was not a success. One reviewer called it the filthiest, vilest, most putrid picture in the history of the motion picture business. But Stroheim had his revenge. Decades later, critics voted greed, even in its truncated form, one of the greatest films ever made.